We've had 20 COPs and what have we done to address climate change? Greenhouse gas levels are rising faster than ever. The extreme weather events are taking off. There's feedbacks putting more CO2 in. There's lots of groups around the world that have these very sophisticated computer models. First of all, you know, you run them backwards to see if they can replicate what's happened in the past. And then you run them forward and try to make projections as to what's going to happen. And these models are used a lot by the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. But the models are under predicting the actual ob observed measurements of what is actually happening. For example, in Arctic sea ice decline, the latest models are showing that the sea ice may be gone the end of the melt season in 2040 or 2050. And if you look at the data, it's likely that there'll be no sea ice before the end of this decade. The Arctic has reflected about 52% of all the incoming solar light on average, and now it's down to 48. So this is a huge drop because it's over a large area. As we warm the Arctic, we are melting permafrost, and we're also getting release of methane from the permafrost on the land, but also on the seafloor. And methane is a very powerful greenhouse gas. So all of these things are happening with 0.8 degrees. So to tell me that we can take two and a half times that warming, I don't know how that's possible. It doesn't make any logical sense to me. You know, that two degree limit is not really a scientifically derived number. Now, there are lots of people like James Hansen and other climatologists that are now saying one and a half degrees is the highest limit we can go, but even one and a half degrees is almost double what we have today. If that two degrees occurs over, you know, a long period of time, you know, 50 years, 100 years, then okay, but if it occurs over a decade or less, then it's a rate of change that is very, very important, which nobody talks about. So if we lose the sea ice this decade in September, then the extreme weather events are going to increase at least an order of magnitude 10, 20 times. Many parts of the world are undergoing extreme precipitation regimes, either droughts or flooding. You know, vast regions of the ocean are four or five degrees Celsius warmer than normal. It's causing lots of marine life kills off the west coast of North America. Humans use the oceans in, in many different ways. Most importantly, we get a lot of food from the ocean, but we also use the ocean to transport our materials. So a lot of the CO2 that we pump into the atmosphere gets trapped by the oceans. Much of the oxygen that we breathe comes from the oceans. And so if we want to maintain the lifestyle that we have and, and using the ocean the way we have, we must protect them. The, the whole system seems to be reconfiguring. It, it's, we're going into very unknown territory. You can only adapt so much. We have to go full speed ahead with mitigation. We have to slash fossil fuel emissions, not by 2100, which the G7 just talked about, not by 2050. We have to treat the climate mayhem that is occurring as a global emergency that threatens our actual existence on this planet.